Okay, hello, good evening. Um, what we're going to be doing to this at the moment is we're going to do a quick solo Arcwing run of Careless just to prove that it can be done. Um, some people were asking for help with that, some people were saying it was impossible to solo. I know a lot of people are having trouble with Arcwing in general as well, so we're going to basically take you through a bit of... Uh, well, we're going to get it started. So here we are on the Orbiter. This is my very little Avara, because I only just got her. What the important point we're going to make is that we have got corrosive projection for the reduction in armor, which does carry through to Arcwing. Another really cool thing you can do as well is if you put uh, Animal Instinct on, um, for the loot radar and the enemy radar that carries across to Arcwing as well so you get the loot radar in Arcwing which helps you spot those mods and things so we're going to switch over to the Arcwing now people have said obviously you know they don't want to put so much time into Arcwing they want to get the best they can get out of Careless as quickly as possible so I am using an Imperator and a Veritux I've switched to the Odonata Prime the only reason I'm using the Odonata, Odonata Prime rather than the Odonata is because it needs leveling up it's not quite maxed yet. I mean, I've got a, ma a maxed Adonata, I've got a maxed Itzel, I've got, you know, an Elytron on the way as well. But, the one, uh, you know, as I said, if I want to do this, I am doing it obviously to help the community out, but at the same time, if I get a couple of mastery ranks on my Adonata Prime, I'm not going to complain too much. I don't even have it maxed out. It, it has got a potato in. So the important things to grab are the enhanced durability, uh, energy inversion for the shield and health, uh, Argon plating is nice, but not too important. Superior defenses is pretty handy. These are just, you know, these are nice little things to have. You know, power efficiency and power max. You don't really need them. They are kind of harder to get mods. So these are the important for really for your defenses. You need to be able to survive a couple of hits because you will get hit. Now, gonna change a little bit with the guns. You are gonna need a few mods. Now we've got we're modded for corrosive because everything basically is ferry armor. Um, so it just takes crap loads of damage from corrosive, which is really nice. We've got max venomous clip. We've got max polar magazine. Do rounds again. He's one of those things that's quite nice. You wouldn't really need it. All max trigger for a bit better fire rate. Rubedo line barrel, which sh you should really grab if you plan to do any arcing at all. It does take a little bit of farming to get, but it's not too hard. It's actually quite easy to farm. Oh, well, we've also got the electrified barrel as well, obviously, because electrified and venomous clip to make the corrosive polars. Just to get if you get any procs, it slows them down. You're not going to mod for crit because the crit chance on an imperator is crap. It's ten percent, and it's a two times modifier, and the status chance is pretty rubbish as well. So. You know, you basically use modern for flat damage wherever possible. I'm gonna also take a Veritux. Basically, to be fair, you could probably run with just about any melee weapon. They're all about the same. Again, because it's the basic one, the crit chance is rubbish, the status chance is rubbish. So we've got cutting edge for melee damage, galvanized blade and poison sting to make the corrosive damage. Fear off for a bit of attack speed, extend for a bit of extra range. Not can't quite fit it all in because while it comes with a potato, you know when they're maxed. I just about fall short thanks to the really rubbishy polarity that it comes with. It, it does come with one of these wonderful Vazarin polarities which do nothing for anyone really. Um, but it has got Blast on there as well. I suppose I could take Blazing Steel out, but it, it, it does quite a bit of extra damage. So that's our full setup. As I say, you could run with a normal Adonara instead of a Prime. Now we are going to obviously switch that down from Public to Solo, because we are doing this on our own. Um, if you wanted to make this a bit easier on yourself, Itzal is incredibly useful for soloing, just because of the speed uh, of diving between um, points. But we'll we'll get onto that in a moment. So we're just going to load this up. So basically, the tactic is, you know, you want to dash between points as quick as possible. You know, you hit your closest target and move from there. Oh, this looks fun. So you know, you don't want to stay in any point for too long. You just want to get as many points as possible because the enemy. You basically what you're doing is you're abusing the enemy's AI. The enemy AI is only really smart enough to go after about two points at a time. So if you can capture all four points, you basically force the enemy to choose a couple of points they're going to go for. I mean, look how fast that went down, that was thanks to the corrosive crocs. This is the basic gun that everyone, and this is the worst gun in, in, in Arkwing, it is pretty damn terrible. You know, this is your, your Mark 1 Brat kind of quality. Probably worse, actually. Comparatively, but again, it's all about how, you know, with, with everything with that, with uh, Warframe, it's all about how you mod. Now, the reason we're playing solo as well, not only would people like asking for help to see if they could solo, but the thing about uh, interception missions 
is that if you choose to do them solo, the enemy density is significantly lower than um, if you do them at full full whack. So, you know, when there's four of you, there'll be a lot more. Um, there'll be a lot more enemy density around, so you'll be hitting, you be getting hit by a lot more people, and there'll be a lot. It's, you know, it's harder to actually burst your way through them. Uh, we want to be doing as well while you're while you're switching between the points, because obviously they captured D as I, as I said. Sorry, C as I said. They, they went after one target. They might go after a second. You know, just kind of flip between the points. Try and cover them wherever possible. Kill anything you see moving before it hits a point. Because obviously, if they then have to respawn at the end of the map, because arcing how space maps are so very large, a lot of the time the enemies are on the map is literally spent going from point to point rather than actually um, capping anything. Now we can see obviously on the radar there, there is a mod around here somewhere, so let's have a quick look. There it is, glowing thanks to our enemy radar, uh, animal instinct mod, which is really nice. It looks like they're probably hitting here, so we're going to go over and defend there. Now, there's a couple of enemies that you do want to avoid. Shield, Dargons, and Ogmas are uh, very, very dangerous. They're the, basically the two enemies that are going to kill you. Um, shield, Dargons, are almost 100% immediate damage from the front, unless you have a Grattler. Grattlers seem to bypass their... Um, because Grattlers, like, got an AoE explosion, it does seem to bypass their shielding a lot, and you can actually kill them from the front. Otherwise, you kind of just want to get out of dodge, back up, wait till they get bored here, and then kill it anything, you know, kill it from behind. You can also melee them, but you take a lot of electricity damage, uh, and again, that's why they tend to be the one things that are going to kill you, because if you, if one sneaks up anyway, you find something else, and just bashes through you with that shield, it, it does significant damage, and you're probably going to see us die a couple of times during this run, because... You can't, unfortunately, look in every direction on your own. You've got, you know, we are solo, so there is no one to cover our back. Now, we're going to basically repeat this. You can see we're already at 76%, so it's not in terrible. That was a suicide attempt by Dregs. Dregs are basically useless. They're only there to kind of slow you down, tether you up, annoy you, and, you know, basically distract you from looking for those shield dargons and the augmas. Should be your priority concern at all times is, is checking to see if there's a shield dog or an dog or about to jump on you. Now, if you do need some of the mods, I did show you most of them are pretty easily farmable. I mean, if you do, one of the big problems, and you know, while we're here, because it is going to be about 20 minutes of mission, I'm going to have a bit of a rant about arcing as well, because there's certain things that just need to be done better. Right, just for a moment, we just cleared our first the rotation. So we're just gonna wander around and kill the last few enemies. With the corrosive modern weapon, generally not too hard to, to pull this off, as I say. You know, when you're clearing a rotation out, try and stick as close to a point as possible so that as soon as it starts, you're ready to capture. Um, because that's obviously going to make things a bit more convenient for you and a bit quicker for you. There we go, combustion rounds. So there, you, you see, you get a lot of mods from actual mission rewards. Now this is something that isn't really done anywhere else in the game, and it can be incredibly annoying to run. Not so much a, a exterminate, because the exterminates are pretty quick, but running a mobile defense or something on Mars where you've got to defend three three satellites for five minutes, for like three minutes at a time, you know, it's quite a long mission, really, and when you factor in that, you know, you, you've got the chance to get a common mod. You know, it could easily be a common mod. It might not even be, you know, your Ruben Air Barrels or your Hyper Thrusters or whatever they're called. You know, you could pick up, you know, like, Extend or, or Plus Status on, on Melee, which is terrible. Especially because, you know, Arkham mods are pretty weak um, a lot of the time. They're fairly ineffective. Um... You know, plus 10% status is no good to anyone. Because on a, on a weapon like this, which has, what, 10, 5% status? That's plus 10% to that is 0.5%. That's that's not going to do anything to you. So, you know, getting that for as a reward for a mission you've just spent 15 minutes on is pretty shit. If you pardon my French. Um, and that is one of my biggest things with Arkham is it is pretty rough to get started with. Now... 
I think affinity wise, look at the affinity of these mods are dropping, you might be thinking, ah, oh, it's not too bad. But I have, I am running an Affinity Booster, and I can't stop that because I did buy uh, Saren Prime Access, so I'm well within my, you know, the end of my um, Prime Access duration. Because I want to, you know, I don't mind paying for free to play games, especially when you've got the amount of hours I've got out of Warframe. I do like to give a little bit back, and the easiest way to do it is to grab some like, Prime Access with a Platinum and things like that. And, and that's what I did. It's been good. But I have got a 90 day Affinity Booster, which was. You know, you, you're seeing 500 affinity for a kill and you're probably thinking, not too bad. But when the highest enemy on the map is giving you 400 affinity, it can take a while to level up. Or a, or a wing. Now luckily, the, the, I still have not managed to cap out enough mods, or even really need enough mods to actually fill out a, a wing's um, requirements for um, energy for a drain. But, there and again lies one of the problems. Some of the mods are just incredibly hard to get. I mean, the generally generally accepted way of getting Rubidoux Line Barrel is finding a Corpus mission, finding a carrier and baiting it into a tight corner, and sitting there and farming the drones that it spits out. So, I mean, it took me upwards of 20 minutes to get one Rubidoux Barrel. Now, I do have more now, and, and you know, I could have went on trade and bought it, but I wanted to kind of, you know, see if I was going to do a, a piece on Arthur, and I wanted to get a full feel for, you know, what things took. 20 minutes of farming, like, the uh, tiny little drones created by another drone to get a, a mod. You know, these are things that, if you didn't do it that way, and if you weren't gonna intentionally farm like that, you barely see these drones on a normal mission. I mean, I, be I believe Ogmas also can drop a Rubidoux line barrel, or maybe it's dual shot they drop with something ridiculous like a 3%. And again, I mean, you're going to see how many Ogmas we kill in this mission. And this is the highest, one of the highest level grenade missions in the game. Um, so it's pretty ridiculous to farm for those good mods. However, you know, once you get cracking with it, I mean, like, you get a fair amount of gear um, from this. You actually get an Elytron amongst other things. We get, you got the chance of getting the incredibly rare Fluctus limbs. But with this guide, basically, it gives you enough. You can solo everything in the game up to um, the defense mission on Neptune. Now, I haven't managed to figure out a way to solo that yet. As soon as I do, you can rest assured I'll put it into a video. I mean, you can you can solo it with one ship dying, but you know, one of the one of the one of the actual good things about Arkwing is that that mission, that defense mission, is one of the best, most rewarding defense missions in the game. Because I don't know if you if you've not done it. There's two ships that you've got to defend, and if you keep them both alive, you get a reward for each ship every five waves. So when you hit wave 20, where you'd normally get, you know, like one piece of a weapon, or, you know, you actually get two pieces of two pieces of weapons if you keep them both alive. You know, so, and it, unfortunately, it does take, it does feel like it takes a lot longer than a normal defense, because the enemies kind of spawn quite slowly. So normally, you know, I've been doing that in groups, and if you get one bad group, or... You know, someone comes in with no gear or without the correct mods and the weapons, it can be incredibly painful you can lose a ship. And losing a ship at like 18, 19 waves is, is heartbreak. Uh, and obviously, cause, especially because you know you're about to not get your, an extra C rotation reward. Um, not a bad place to farm fusion cores as well, actually, this. If you get lucky, you can get 5 R5 gold cores, which is pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, so, as I was saying, the defence, if I figure out how to solo it, I'll, I'll crack on with that. But, you know, there's those early missions, I mean, you can be farming for the dual Decurions or the uh, Velocis, and, and, and then, you know, the game drops a common mod. And it's like, well, thanks again, but really? You know, nowhere else in the game does it go, is there a place where, you know, you can get, I suppose, keys, or... Um, you know, Roken Cells, Formers, that kind of thing, cause, but nowhere else does the game go, here is, you know, you don't finish a Tower 1, and it gives you, you know, redirection or something. So why does it do an Arthur? It just doesn't make any sense. If you're going to do it, at least have those cores be, you know, rare gold, sorry, uh, those mods be rare gold mods that you may actually need, that would give you some worth farming it, but unfortunately it just doesn't. I've had a particularly good run so far. We actually haven't been jibbed by insta jibbed by a Dargan or a, or an Ogma within the first two waves, which is quite impressive. 
gonna get away from you. I haven't even really used, you probably noticed I haven't really used any abilities, you just don't need to. I mean, energy shell is nice if you've got a decent crit weapon, because it does increase your crit damage, and also increases your fire damage, but you know, it's not something we're particularly using against these. That's why I tend to prefer it's all for this, just for getting around faster. It's all, can, you can cap two points before the enemies have even hit the first spawn. Um, you know, even got out of spawn, really, if you've got an Itzal, because of how fast it is. Which is pretty awesome. You may also notice that towers seem to cap faster the less people in the game. So that's pretty nice. But yeah, as I say, the biggest concern with, with the way Arkham is currently implemented in-game is, is the terrible rewards. I also feel like the loot tables are really overloaded. Um, you know, nowhere in the, else in the game is one loot table got maybe eight drops on, other than uh, Equinox, but that's entirely of an argument. Um, you know, when you go to the tower, you go, you know, other than, even with stuff like Void Keys and stuff, you know, there's not eight things on, on a loot table. Whereas here, there's, I believe, sorry, there's seven drops on this table here, which is pretty ridiculous when you consider some uh, arcing maps don't have anything on the loot table. Or have just duplicates. I mean, the Earth Mobile Defense and the Mars Mobile Defense have the exact same items on it, even though Mars is significantly harder due to a higher density of enemies. Now, why can't you take some of what's on, um, you know, the early, you know, the early places you go, the Exterminate map, the, uh, the first Mobile Defense map, and, and dunk that on, on the second Mobile Defense map on Mars? If you kind of if they if they split them out a little bit, it wouldn't make farming for gear feel so bad. And you know if they're gonna insist on leaving mods on the drop table, at least that way, you know you wouldn't feel as bad if you did complete a mission and got a mod because you, you wouldn't not think oh, I'm I'm farming for one of five items and then I get a mod. You'd think I'm farming for one of two or three items and then I get a mod. That's not too bad because you don't expect obviously to to get three items and three drops, but when you're just not getting any items at all. Um, and, and tied into that as well, I don't understand why, when you need three three or four components to make an arcing weapon, why in God's name um, isn't arcing gear tradable? It just makes zero sense. You know, I've got a stack of gear, and I mean, yeah, I've probably got enough gear that would make, you know, some of y'all who are trying to set yourselves up and farm this jealous. I've probably got complete weapons there that I can't do anything with, and I was just thinking, I mean, even now, I'm farming a flood to slim, and I know that everyone has trouble with a flood to slim, so okay, that we just get by a shield bargain, which is why my health just vanished, and, you know, as I said, there's every possibility you're going to die. When you get jammed up like, like that, the easiest way is just to reset it, have a go. No big deal, you can get four revives, it's not a problem. You can see in the bottom corner a little bit of love left over from the um, sort of interception we were running. We were, me and the. Uh, I was a Blan Mirage in an EV Trinity, we were having a little bit of a love affair because we basically helped, so like, you know, helped to play the mission very, very simply. But anyway, um, you know, if. If you were looking for that one part, like dual decurions are a massive pain point as well, you know, because you need two receivers and two barrels, and that's quite a lot. Four parts for for one gun, and especially because the dual decurions are the worst gun in the entire game, in my opinion, they are absolutely horrific. And I would genuinely advise you, unless you're a master completionist addict, do not go anywhere near them with even a very long, very dirty stick. Um, if you're really looking to, to pick up some early power that, you know, you don't have to do too much work for in Arkwing, you can get yourself a Grattler from Clantech, which is a horrific amount of Oxium. But if you've got a lot of Oxium, uh, the Grattler's actually a very, very good gun. Um, and if you really, really hate Arkwing and you're just trying to do it to, you know, complete the farm the weapons out and, or kill Jordus, you know, you can do a lot worse than a Grattler. Um, you will obviously need to level it up a bit, and you'll need to get some mods for it, so you'll need to play the levels a bit, but, you know, you can get yourself into a position where you can kill, um, kill Jordus with Grattler no issues quite quickly. Especially because you don't really need any melee mods, and you barely need any warfare, or any uh, Arquing mods. You just need the gun mods. So, you, you know, if you're really desperate, you could even trade for them. 
put a potato in your grab. Grab a few quick levels through doing a mobile defense or two in a pug. And then rob your father's brother, you're farming Atlas in no time. Um, but that's, again, your choice. You know, depends how you want to approach it. I kind of got boosted through Jordis at first. Felt so bad about it. I went, you know what, I kind of want to go give a little bit back. And that's why I started to actually get into our thing. And I actually really enjoy the, the gameplay itself. It's pretty cool. The idea is pretty fantastic. You know, flying around the space, shooting stuff up. I, I just want to throw on some like really funky anime Gundam type of music and, and just zone out to it sometimes. And that's, and that's cool, but... I know not everyone is going to agree with that. I know not everyone is going to want to play it that way. But, you know, the more you put into it, the more enjoyable it actually is. Because when you can start actually doing, obviously, like, what I'm doing and just wandering through missions, you feel like a, you know, a tenor again. You feel like a proper badass person, which is, you know, the fantasy of the game. And a lot of the problem, I think, with Arkham is because you start with such terrible guns, and you kind of get it at a point in the game where you've actually just started to farm up a few frames and a few extra weapons, and you're feeling pretty good about yourself. You're feeling pretty tough. You're like, yeah, I can take on the galaxy. And then you get thrown into a new game mode, and you're, you're pants. You, you know, you're rubbish. You're weak. And it's like, well, this doesn't feel good anymore. And I think that's why a lot of people do have that cognitive trouble with with Arkwing in general. Um, yeah, I know I'm, I'm flitting across a lot of points, but it, obviously there's a lot of time to kill. Um, prove that this can be done. Have some missiles just to say I fired a power. If you stay back far enough from shield bargains they'll often turn their back on you and, and they'll give you a free kill. If not, sometimes if you if you've got not many enemies around, it, it can be easier just to dash in and, and mow you them. Take a bit of damage, but it's no big deal. Obviously if you can pick them off for this there's bonus points to that. Um Ogma's a week from the front and the back and uh, Dregs are just crap, so I don't worry about them too much. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of my thoughts on Arkwing. You know, to summarise, get mods off the drop tables unless you're going to put them in very, very early missions where, you know, that have less dilute tables. Get tower keys off the drop tables. If I complete this and get another goddamn T4 survival, which I don't even need, because I've got a stack of them, you know, why am I getting survival keys, you know, for for land frame missions from a space mission. I understand getting cores because I can use those on my Arkham gear, but why am I getting tower keys from this? It makes no sense to me. There we go. Let's see all the enemies dead. Just going to tidy up and we are done. Point proven, you can clear Kalos with standard gear. And a few mods, which, again, really, if you don't want to pick up the mods, you don't want to pump the mods, you can probably buy with that one. Trade's pretty easy to get gear, Warframe trade market, you know, the, the website is pretty good for it. Boom. No, we're not going to stay. Why would, you, why would you ever stay for four more, four more rounds when you can just back out and start again? And that's an Elytron harness, so it's not the Fluctus Lane which we were hoping for, but it's part of the Elytron. That is how you find the Kale Solo. Um, got a couple more levels on the Adonic Prime there. Um, Vertex and Emperor are already maxed, obviously. We'd have a quick look at how many enemies we killed in a sec. Because I didn't quite notice that, and then I will sign us off. Where are we? Um, there we go. We killed 19% accuracy, not so great. 266 kills, that's not too bad. Again, you know, I think there's a few things that they could do to, other, to otherwise to Archwing arch to make it better. For example, you know, start dropping Oxium. You need Oxium for, for certain Archwing gear. Why is it not dropped in the in in space. You know, why do why do Arkwing missions take the loot tables of the planet for for gear when they could have specific loot tables for Arkwing missions? Because you don't necessarily expect what would drop on the land mission on, on the planet to drop in the space around the planet. That seems a bit weird. Um, you know, stop get the loot tables undiluted, make a bit more you know, spread them out across the galaxy a bit more. Suddenly, you know, you've got a reason to do more than five missions across the entire game, because literally, there is only five missions in the entire game that are worth doing. Um, and that's about it. You know, make the parts tradable. So, I'll just have a quick look at my inventory, actually. Um, so I suppose this will probably make the point. There's my wings. Um, where is the head? So I've got a couple of extra Corvus stocks, uh, two Sentinel Blades, three Corvus receivers, um, where else are we? 
extra elytron harness, extra elytron wings, flipped his stocks out the out the wazoo, flipped his barrel. Uh, four Kazas handles, but no Kazas blade because that's dropped from the defense, unfortunately. Um, an Oryx blade, you need two of those, but I got five handles, three fader valves, a fader receiver. I've got a fader already, so I don't even need that. You know, four Rathbone handles. Uh, da, 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 where are we? Velocitas stock. I actually have a complete Velocitas. You know, if if someone went and came up and said, Look, I want to play 50 plat, can you give me a Velocitas? Yeah, I can, but I can't trade it to them. Why? Every other comp thing that requires so many components needs trade. But yeah, I think generally they could have leave Arcwing the same and just reduce the pain points like that. You know, maybe. Um, that's wrong. But I was just going to check my mods a second. You know, if they if they did that, maybe people would have more fun with it. Because look, I've got extra automatic triggers that I could help people out with. I've got an extra dual rounds. I I could say, you know, I can sell those, and you know, I'm more than happy to. If if anyone really needs help, give me a shout. You know, if you if you found for an hour for a Rubio line barrel, I've got a spare. I can I can hook you up. But and I'm sure other people will as well because we're a pretty generous community. So ask around if you're really having trouble farming those mods out and, and you'll get it farmed super easy anyway thank you so much for watching my name is full metal cos you can find me at twitter and facebook and twitch i do broadcast on twitch i do also make the occasional youtube video uh, i'm gonna throw my end of the screen up there there are all of the ways you can follow me if you have enjoyed the video please do come along to um to twitch.tv slash full metal cos give me a follow it does help immensely um very appreciative we've got a really nice small community we're building up around there we don't just play warfare we play a lot of other things um it'd be great to have you thanks so much for your time hope you enjoy the video stay classy people